Assembly. Assemblywoman Atkins is only the second speaker of the Assembly that has addressed a Kabe conference, and we are very proud to welcome her today. Please welcome Assemblywoman Atkins. Well, thank you so much, and good morning. I hope you're having a great time at the conference, and I want to thank you so much for choosing San Diego, and of course for the honor of inviting me to be with you for a few minutes this morning. The San Diego region has some terrific educators at every level, and I know that many of you are here today, and I want to thank you as a San Diegan for your commitment to students in our community. One of the things that I think is important to remember when we talk about education is focusing on the whole picture of what's affecting our kids. And so, we need to look at poverty. The Public Policy Institute of California released a study last year showing that roughly 50% of California children live in poverty or near poverty. The PPIC also showed that without the state's safety net programs, an additional 1.3 million children would be poor. I grew up in Southwest Virginia in a blue collar working poor community. Poverty could have really held me back. But I had a school with great teachers and counselors and art and music. And I needed art and I needed music and I desperately needed those counselors because my family couldn't help me figure out how to get ahead. I was the first kid in my family to go to college. So I needed those, those things in school and I needed the academics. And all of those things I had access to and that helped me overcome those circumstances we need to look at nutrition. Nutrition plays a critical role in child development and academic achievement. I was in a breakfast club. I was a latchkey kid. My sister and I every morning headed off together to the breakfast club. Now I might add they did serve us those cinnamon donuts that were warmed in the oven. I'm not sure, sure that would go over today, but uh, you know that gave me and my sister a chance to have something to eat before we went to school in the morning. And I know that made my parents feel good that we had that resource because they had to go to work. They didn't have a choice. Every policymaker should be pushing to expand access to child nutrition programs so that all eligible children are served. California has the lowest SNAP participation rate in the nation for this 100% federally funded food benefit. And too many of our communities remain food deserts where families don't have access to wholesome, healthy food. We're going to be taking a look at that this year in the assembly. We have to look at housing instability. Numerous studies, and you know firsthand, that children in crowded homes have poorer health, worse scores on math and reading tests, and higher rates of depression and behavioral problems. I'm working on finding a sustainable state funding source to help increase the amount of affordable housing for all of our communities. We need to look at health care. Healthy students are better learners. We've helped a lot of Californians get access to health care through Covered California and Medi-Cal expansion. The more families who have access to health care, housing, and nutrition, the more success we'll see in classrooms up and down the state. And we as policymakers need to address all of these issues. The lack of these issues being addressed affects what you do and are able to do each and every day in the classroom. So we need to back you up on that. And of course, where you play a key role, we have to look at language barriers and how we can best meet the needs of English learners. And when I say we, I do mean we. If California kids are going to be able to compete and succeed, there has to be a real partnership between teachers, parents, community leaders, and elected officials at every level. And one tool we have to make sure we're addressing the needs of English learners is the local control funding formula. Through that, we separate outcomes for a number of categories of children, including English learners. This is going to help us uh, assess how we are doing and how to target resources. But an even better tool, of course, is all of you. You're the ones doing the heavy lifting, and you know what it takes to prepare students to make it in the 21st century. And biliteracy is going to be an increasingly necessary and valuable skill set. A couple of weeks ago, I was meeting with the state PTA up in Sacramento, 
I uh, shared with them the experience I had a couple of years uh, doing teacher for a day. I came away with two things in my mind. Teachers need more money, and you certainly can clap on that. And teachers have an incredibly tough job. It was hard enough for me to just play teacher for an hour, I might add. I don't know how you do it. Um, but when you factor in the challenges of language in a state as diverse as our own California, well, again, all I have to say is thank you. You are doing the hardest job of all. And I want to pledge to you, along with my assembly colleagues, because I know how they feel about these issues, to be your partner. So as you enter your last day here in San Diego at this conference, I hope you get all that you need to sustain yourself, to inspire yourselves, to go back out there and do the toughest job of all. Thank you.